VA 2014-10 adjusted and Joe Nizem. Staff, would you please present? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This one is a rezoning request um, for 0.51 acres to rezone from R10 to RM. This is property located at 1013 Cherokee Street. Um, and as you can see on the map on the screen, it is the northern portion of the piece of property that actually extends through the Bay Tree. Um, it is on, I guess, between Miramar and Jerry Jones, but a little bit north of the Bay Tree Corridor. Some of you may recall a few years ago, this came through as a planned development request um, with a very detailed site plan and lots of conditions. We've included a copy of all of that for you in your packet. Um, this is the northern half of that subject property. Um, R10 is single family. CC back a few years ago did not allow multifamily as a matter of right, it does now. So their proposal is to put in a 17 unit apartment complex. Um, the CC portion does not need to be presented in order to do that, but the R10 does. And the whole reason is the plan development had an expiration date um, that expired about one year ago, about 13 months ago. Um, so they're now wanting to pursue development of the property as a conventional means rather than through plan development. Um, in your packet, you see the character area, so we look at this straight from a rezoning perspective. This is what we call a transitional neighborhood. Despite what I have put on your cover page, it is not community activity center, but it is transitional neighborhood. Um, area would see a lot of the older urban forest, um, a single family neighborhood that has already gone through some encroachment issues with some multifamily that occurred 20 or more years ago. Um, and then you see pictures of such a property and some of the surroundings, and then the site plan. Um, also in your packet is a copy of the PD plan, uh, which was labored on a lot, that's why it's in tricky colors, um, but it showed a different scale of development, that was 12 dwelling units, um, on a different layout um, to work with this very hard to develop piece of property. We talked about this at length at the work session, with some of the issues with the site plan, some of the things just will not fit on there the way they are depicted. Um, I understand the applicant is trying to work or continue to work getting things to fit in a little better way. Um, but what is before you is not so much the site plan. Remember, rezoning does not approve a site plan. Plan development did, that locked them into a site plan. But here we're looking at the request of changing the single family zoning portion of the property to multifamily. Um, as we discussed at the work session, there's pros and cons to this from the staff perspective. There is some existing multifamily there you see in the RM. There's a lot of existing single family use still in that neighborhood. Staff is concerned that with the site being shaped in size the way it is, um, you have to have access onto Cherokee to make any type of development work. Um, and therefore, it's, you cannot orient it just to Bay Tree Road. Um, and staff use this as a, an additional intrusion into the neighborhood. And so, from that perspective, we are finding it inconsistent with our comprehensive plan and more importantly, our standards for exercise of zoning power, and we're recommending denial of this zoning request. If there's questions. any questions for staff. Did you happen to find out anything about the amount of rental property in that single room? Actually, I did. And this is how the press. Commissioners, as you had asked at the work session um, about rental versus owner-occupied single-family dwelling units at the work session, went to the county tax assessor's website and downloaded or copied over some informational maps. On this color map is the zoning pattern in the background. I'm looking at only at the R10 properties that are on Cherokee and two adjacent to the subject property on Miramar. The green dot indicates owner-occupied. Red dot means not owner-occupied, and by owner-occupied, it simply means that the owner of records address at which they get their tax bill is the same address as that property. And it's not necessarily foolproof that that's owner-occupied, but it ought to be somewhat close. Same thing with the not owner-occupied sometimes. 
They may live there. They own the property, but yet the tax bill gets sent to a business address. It's near impossible to distinguish all of these, but it's going to be close. Um, as you see, it's a mixed pattern, just like we had talked about. Um, when the PD was coming through a few years ago, this was one of the questions that also came up. It is still a mixed pattern. Exactly what may have changed in three years, I am not sure. Probably not very much. I remember from the time that most of the owner occupied um, houses at that time were more toward the eastern end of Cherokee, or near the subject property, not so much the western end. That seems to be still true today. Um, from the subject property westward is where you've got the unoccupied on you know, both sides of the street. But that's just a general pattern. And keep in mind, this is not one of our review criteria, but it does shed a little bit of light on the existing character of the neighborhood. And keep in mind, it is transitional neighborhood, and you would expect to see somewhat of a mixed pattern such as this in a transitional neighborhood. So it's not unusual. Um, but it's here for your information as well. Any additional questions for Commissioner mm -hmm. I, I want a clarification a little bit on the. It was presented before as a plan development. Correct. What was done in that point nine? What was the recommendation? Recommendation was approval of a whole host of conditions, the copy that's in your packet, um, but it was a also multifamily, but on a slightly different layout. In your packet, you have their currently proposed site plan, which is a black and white, which is that one, and then the PD plan is on the last page, okay. for comparison's sake. Thank you. That's it. Matt, in your estimation with a zoning change like this, is it more appropriate for limitations on the number of number of units to be made by permitting rather than this body? Or the well, from the site plan you see, it's going to be very difficult to fit that many units, that many bedrooms in there because of the parking that has to go with it. It's a lot for that one site. Um, they are planning underground detention, so that's one large piece of the puzzle they don't have to worry so much about. Um, so the site itself is going to limit. I think they're going to be very hard pressed to put as many dwelling units and put the all being two bedrooms on here. Um, I know that was part of the discussion during the PD process that went through about three or four months of evolution before it even came to in terms of revisions and re-revisions. Of course at that time they were also wanting to maximize the site. Um, the one advantage that PD gave them was a little more flexibility in terms of development standards, buffer yards and parking layout. They don't have that flexibility with conventional zoning. Um, so I don't think it would be necessary to do that. I think that's between plan review and the variance process, I'm just going to put some limitations on it. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention, and it's not on the map on the screen, um, last month you had a request come through for rezoning the property from R10 to R6, and that is down at the west end. I'll show on the screen, of course. If you look at those two RP parcels, those are two vacant lots, and there's the property immediately to the east that has now been presented by City Council to R6. And the difference between R10 and R6 is lot size, and also R6 allows the possibility of a duplex. And as we talk about the work session, that is in the realm of possibilities here as well. Oh, one more. Yeah. Um, I'm looking here uh, on the front page of our cycle. It says a maximum of 12 dwellings. Is that what they're requesting, or is that what you the 12 is what was approved with the PD master plan. Okay. That was one of the conditions. And now they're requesting 717. Correct. Okay. That's all I want. Thank you. If I can yes, sir. What I'm understanding, Matt, is the, uh, the denial was based just on the fact that it's such a narrow piece of property to be rezoned? It's, it's, yeah, it's intruding into a neighborhood and it is mixed. I mean, you have family, family and multifamily in there. Um, staff judgment is still primarily a single family neighborhood. And this has to have access onto Cherokee Street. Um, it's entrance or exit or both. Um, if there were more, more multifamily in there, I think we would think differently. 
And this is not a very strong recommendation for denial. It's just it tends to lend itself to preserve, I think, more of a single family neighborhood than converting all to multifamily. Particularly being that the multifamily is all clustered neatly down here at the east end on the Miramar Street of the Loop Road. Not so much this main stretch of charity. If not, at this time, we will, if there's anybody here in favor of this recommendation, please step forward, state your name and your address, please. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Bill Nye from 1007 North Patterson Street. I am here on behalf of the applicants, Joe and Justin Nye. Thanks, Matt. Your colleagues. said the applicant does own the uh, front parcel that fronts Bay Tree Road. It's 0.43 acres. It's own CC. You know, under the ordinances, under the use tables, and this allows an old family with a density of 60 bedrooms per acre to the extent they can be engineered and permitted that way. And that's an important uh, comment. Now, I'll hit that again in a minute. You know, the subject property is immediately north to the uh, CC zone parcel, 0.51 acres is currently zoned R10, or we're seeking uh, rezoning to RM. Uh, 0.51 acres as zoned RM would allow nine multi-family units based on the ordinances. You know, to the extent they can be fit in there, and engineered, and permitted that way, and that's a question for the city and engineers and the architects and everybody involved. So, you know, why am I stressing that? It's because the design plan you have for this development is conceptual in nature. And I think it's important to, to realize that. You know, a lot of times we come through in here and we, we get hung up on site plans. I mean, that site plan is, is subject to change in various different ways, uh, depending on you know, what the city says for engineering, the permitting, whether they fit. Not parking in there, it's setbacks, bumpers, and everything else. So, you know, what, I, what I would ask the commission not to do is don't deny this property reason based on that perception of site plan. I mean, if, if you deny it reason, deny it reason until you don't want multi family there or for duplexes there. But don't look at that perception of site plan and say, we don't like it. Um, this this rezoning would allow 17 units to the extent to be in here uh, that way. Uh, that's along with that's the RM parcel we're asking or the R10 parcel we're asking for the same now as the So that's that's the first point about the site. The uh, the second point I want to make, which has also been discussed a lot is that this is a transitional neighborhood. It's actually a transitional neighborhood character. RM is allowed uh, within the transitional neighborhood character area under the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan contemplates this type of zone in a transitional neighborhood. Um, 
you know, there's multifamily all around it, and really not all around it, but to the east of it, across Cherokee and directly adjacent to the south corner. And so it's not that much of a stretch to see multifamily on this parcel. Um, and I think it's also important to know, and Mr. Colson touched on this, and asking for the number of tenants and the property that's there. I think you, you'll see, I haven't looked at Matt's research yet, but our research showed that there were a majority of renters up and down here. So this, this, this area, I mean, it is transitional, along with the college. I think you're seeing more students, more student renters, more student housing, just because of location and the uh, ease of biking or walking to the classes from here. Um, Matt, how many eyes are all this? Eight and seven. Okay. I think if you look at it, the majority of these properties, especially the multi the multifamily, uh, on the other side of here, the direct access, uh, are rooms. Um, given the existing development, the multifamily development is right next to it, and on the other side of Cherokee Street, and, uh, and given the fact that the transitional neighborhood character area and conference plan to contemplate this type of thing. We would ask that you approve uh, this reason. Now, going back to the site plan, I think there's a chance personally to make that site plan a little better. Um, and, you know, I intend to sit down with, with Matt and come out to the council meeting and look at it. But uh, the fact of the matter is, it has to be engineered to the specifications that work. And if they said it's just don't fit, so it's going to fit. Anyway, I've said it off. I'm happy to answer questions. If you have any. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Is anyone else? I do have, I do have one question. I'm sorry. sorry. I was trying to think what it was. Uh, Bill, sorry. on the... Uh, is there a problem with the, if this was approved to have the uh, ingress and egress all from Bay Tree? Given the, uh, and, and maybe Bill's here, he did, I can just say, given the narrow nature of the property, I think it's going to be tough. And I think what that would do is probably push more density back towards the chair. probably have to have like a semi-circular or something to that effect. And, you know, if it was me, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to have a fancy on the back side of the chair. I think I would talk. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts. I just had some concerns about the exit or going out onto the, into the residential area. And I, that was just a question. Now, it is, I'm speaking off the cuff here. Um, it is one way. Going, come in on Bay Tree the way they've got it now. Enter on Bay Tree and exit on Cherokee. Matt, you know, I, like I said, I am speaking off the cuff. One thing you should consider, I guess, is just getting a right turnout only on Cherokee. Um, that may present additional problems. Well, that's why the PD was designed the way it was as one way traffic flow from south to north. Yeah. Um, and we had looked at isolating Cherokee even under the PD review, that was a desirable outcome. The problem was, and just like you said, um, is getting the turnaround in there. You know, a fire truck has to be able to get in, turn around, and get out. And there's not a whole lot of maneuvering room for them right, to do that. Cold sack and now, the cold sack, I mean, typically it's 100 feet wide. This property is 80 feet wide. Um, to do a loop would be on a very tight curve, and that could be a problem. Even if you could make it work, you would probably put that massive feature somewhere on the lower end with a very short dead end above it, because you're allowed to go up to 150 feet. And so on that short dead end is where you would put your well heads. And like he said, they would be nested up in the northern end. And the southern end would be a lot of pavement. 
Um, the flip side of it is it's no better either. And that's why the PD ended up the way it was. Um, and if the property were 50 feet wider, there was all sorts of other possibilities. And I do want to make the point that if the applicant has approached adjacent property owners about purchasing the properties and for quite frankly I think a fair price and uh, that that could happen. Um, it just wasn't feasible, it didn't work out at the point. So you know if the applicant has looked into alternatives in terms of trying to pick up more property. this time, if there was somebody like to step forward and speak in opposition to this request, you step forward now. Except if there's anybody speaking in opposition, commissioners, I would ask for a recommendation. Discussion. Let's have some discussion. No, I'm just saying I'm hanging in the balance on this one here because a lot of it has to do with the plan and I realize this area is, is, is eventually going to go multi-family, it's, it's just inevitable. The, the plan is going to be their problem. Yeah, I don't know. I could go either way with this one. I'd like to have a little more input from my fellow commissioners here. <laughs> the, the main thing I was looking at, this has already been approved one time as a plan development. Um, if anything, I was thinking of um, sticking with the 12. It, it is a small parcel. It, it, and uh, sticking with the 12 um, residents. same lines, except that I think really the, the question here is you want know, the density to decide you have to really mm -hmm. handle versus uh, whether or not the zoning is appropriate. I Obviously, I uh, you know, we can have this type of zoning in transitional neighborhood, and, uh, and as uh, was discussed, the site plan, you know, the uh, approval of the zoning is not an approval of the site plan anyway. That's correct. And so all of this can still be worked out, but uh, and, and I agree with the comment about in the future, this is clearly going to become more and more commercial. This whole, you look at the, the intersection right down the street at Bay Tree, you know, and, uh, and, um, and where um, Jerry Jones comes across. Service stations, you know, service stations a block or two over, one on the corner. You have a uh, Dollar General there, a restaurant there. You got a strip mall there right across the street. You have a bar. You have a lounge right there on Cherry. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I just, I think that in the future, this is just like going to become a more and more intense area, especially at the, and the college is going to impact everything up and down Bay Tree. If you think about what happened with the Alden Park request, uh, you know, basically the Alden Park request for uh, the apartment complex there, the general science project was approved. Uh, they toned it down a little bit in their, in, in their approval for a bit. But it was approved, and then this, the, the cliffhanger there with the Nichols House was denied. It was in the paper, uh, uh, I think on Friday's front page, you know, the, the uh, historic preservation of the Nichols House was also denied. And I think all of this really has to do with the fact that our, our city leaders realize that this whole area is going to continue to grow and develop and become, become more intense in its own. So, I mean, for me, that's a long way, I guess, to say from a zoning perspective, I think that the request is a reasonable request. It's just a matter of whether or not the uh, applicants can work with the city council and come up with something that will fit on the property that will suit everybody's needs and, and perhaps if there's some compromise uh, that can be made there. Just, just add one additional comment. This is an intrusion into the, the R10 zone, and it's bust right up against the owner occupied. But I haven't seen anybody object to it, so if the neighbors aren't going to object to it, I just don't feel like it's my place to object on their behalf. So, right. Well, I, I, if I could interject <coughs> some 
hearsay. I don't have a correct knowledge of this, but I understand that some of the private uh, property owners that are living there have been working with the realtor to try to group their properties together to get more money for development into multi-housing wells. Uh, and I think as Mr. Nigel alluded to, they had offered a very fair price for the property to the adjacent property owner and this person uh, from the story I, I heard was not interested because he wanted much more than was being offered and felt that he had a good chance of getting it if the whole neighborhood of parcel owners could group together and come up with something that could satisfy a potential uh, future development. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, please? Sorry. Uh, May I? Um, I'm going back and looking at the, uh, at the uh, conditions that was on the plan development. Some of them not going to apply because it's not a plan development. What are what are the uh, code setbacks if it was approved without anything? For building setback, it's 10 feet. Um, it, Increases if your building becomes above 35 feet, which it's is automatic. It's automatic. Right. What is some of the issues? And we covered some of this at the work session. Um, if you look at on here the zoning map, uh, buffer yards are required when you have RM zoning next to R10. So here you've got that. And another thing I wanted to point out too, we talk about 12 units allowed through the PD and how the master plan with the PD. These are not the same subject properties. This is only half of the subject property of the PD. Mm -hmm. um, and on this particular site plan, um, they're showing eight dwelling units on this northern parcel, which is R10, and nine on the CC parcel. So if we go to comparing numbers between the two or placing limitations, I recommend caution with that because these are not the same property. This is only a half acre parcel. Um, buffer yards is one of the things that came up during the plan review or a review process for rezoning. It's not the same as plan review, but all of the city's reviewing departments do look at the conceptual site plan. They know it's conceptual. If they see some obvious issues, they will note those, and those are compiled there in your packet. But here you have R10 property that is proposed to be RM. It is surrounded on three-fourths of its boundary. If you look at the east and west boundaries by R10, one-fourth by RM. It's where it's next to the remaining R10 portions, which is all of its western side, the southern half of its eastern side. On those portions, a 20-foot buffer yard is required. You can reduce that to 10 feet if you put up a solid fence, at six feet high, which is what they're proposing. Um, but they also, because of the narrow configuration of the property, have their building right at the 10-foot line. And you're not allowed to encroach into the buffer yard with walkways or air conditioning units and rear steps and things like that. So that has been brought to their attention, um, which means in the past when we've run into this, they scoot the building in two or three feet to accommodate for that. Here, based on their site plan and their floor plan, they don't have two or three feet and to spare because it's just that tight. Parking is another issue. Their site plan shows perpendicular parking which has a minimum depth of the parking space plus a minimum width of the aisle, which is why that was not designed that way in the PD because the property is simply not wide enough to accommodate that without going through a variance process. So that's one possibility. Angle parking takes up less room than the perpendicular parking. The problem is angle parking is hard to fit as many spaces on there um, because of the angles. And that's why it's a very difficult site to try and put this many dwelling units on and meet all the parking requirements. Is, is, there, is there going to be at some point a limitation on the number of stories that can be? Well, two story with a not very sharply pitched roof keeps you below the 35 foot height threshold. Um, so that keeps it down. And also, multifamily of three stories more also mandates a greater setback. So they're stuck with two-story anyway okay. um, because of the 10-foot distance. If they were able to go to 20 feet, they could go higher. How much uh, difference in acreage is it from the PD in there? Well, the PD was just under one acre. This is 0.51.
No further questions. Thank you. I mean, the, despite the slight fan showing, the southern parcel being wider, that northern parcel is actually larger because it's longer. <laughs> So all, but all we're supposed to look at is the zoning portion. We don't care if they're going to build a pink elephant out there, right? Correct. <laughs> you know, the site plan is there, one, because they have to show you one as part of the request. Right. And two, it's there as a conceptual idea of a what-if scenario. If we approve the zoning, then they've got to go through city engineering and everything else before right. they can start building. And they're going to hold their feet to the fire for the setbacks and the driveway widths and everything else. Correct. That's not us. Unless you want a condition at a limited number, which they could. Which I don't have a problem with that. Either. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But, but just if I might, such a condition is totally conceptual on our part. We have absolutely nothing to base a condition upon. Just like the site plane's conceptual, just like our, we could say one. That's totally conceptual, and and you know, with all due respect, you know, the comment was made that future uses, this would be REM. I don't know if you've been out there, but it is REM. Yeah. I mean, seven of seventeen adjacent properties are are owner occupied. That means ten are rental occupied, and every way you go from this place, it is rental care. So, I, I just don't see any reason not to. And just let it, let it bear what That's not our job. You're right. I mean, it's absolutely not our job to get, on, get in on that. That's planning. I mean, that's permitting and, and the rest of the mm -hmm. process. Our job is to say, does it fit within the character area? And in my estimation, it absolutely does. Yeah, look, there are some other factors. Uh, we do have, we do have privy to take into effect. That's the impact on the neighbors and the traffic and, and, and we don't go strictly technically that staff does that. But we do have some other practice. But I agree with you. I, I, the more I hear about this, the more I think uh, it's going that way. It, 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 not us. The next, the next group, not the next time. Sorry? Any more discussion, commissioners? If not, we will hear a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion based on the discussion that uh, it does seem appropriate uh, that we would recommend for zoning purposes approval of this request uh, that this area is in the future become more and more, will become more and more intense and the area already around it, even on Alton, uh, is somewhat of to do, is highly rented. So the whole area around this area is really major already. Uh, so with that, um, we would uh, also discuss uh, any permitting, any intensity issues, uh, engineering to uh, the city and the city staff to uh, take care of those issues with the effort. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second Mr. Hall. Okay, I'll take one. <laughs> Mr. Hall, I'll let you have this one. Oh, okay, thank you. All in favor of this request, please show by raise your right hand. Motion passes. This concludes.